Hey y'all, new day, new verses. We're digging into verses 43 through 48, the teaching about loving your enemies. And I think in today's world, probably a useful subject. News media has everybody at everybody's throats, and there's this constant anger in the air. And a lot of it rightly so. It's understandable where the anger is coming from. It's what we do with it and how we respond. And I think that leads us right into today's verses. Let's dig in. You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. Breaking it down a little bit, the verse actually is there in there, the whole love your neighbor, that actually is a true legitimate law. It's Leviticus 19.18. And the unwritten part of it, hate your enemy, because that tends to be what we default to as humans. We love those who can benefit us or love us back, and we hate those who don't. Even into the verse there, if you love only those who love you, is there any reward for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. Even the people who are the worst betrayers of their own people do that. Conspirators love the people who love them. But what are we supposed to do? Well, we are to be perfect, even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. It's like, that's really heavy. It's impossible, you know. Well, we're being perfected. So, in the process of being perfected, we get to see what it is to love. You know, Jesus gives the perfect examples there. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. He gives sunshine to both the good and the evil. And there are times in the Bible where he has not given sun and not given rain. But on the whole, it rains for everyone. The sun shines on everyone. And I think that very nature shows God's love. Shows the fact that he wants us to choose him because he's actively showing his love to everyone. As Jesus, having died for the sins of the world, for everyone. Not divided by anything or by anything. He died for all of us. He died to set it right. That is the reason we call him the Prince of Shalom. Wholeness. Completeness. If we only love like the world, then we behave exactly like the world. If we are in the world and not of it, then our response must be different. Just because of the nature of who and what we are. Born again believers. A new creation. So, how does one love? Well, I think it's interesting here that it is after revenge, after vows, after divorce, well, after adultery, anger, and teachings about the law, right back to being the salt and light of the earth. If we're supposed to live reflecting of God's love, reflecting of God's character, being the light of the world and the salt of the earth, then love is that kind of compassion. It is remembering that people are people. The choices may be foolish and come with folly, but at the end of the day, our war is against principalities and spirits, not against flesh and blood. So, when somebody does something that tries to make you their enemy, simply don't play the game. You know, the reaction-action game. Somebody throws a fist, punches you in the face. That hurts. What's the response? What's the reaction? Is it to hit back? Well, we know we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to turn the cheek if somebody slaps us. Okay, then, you know, it's always going back to the previous step. 
it all builds on itself. It all builds to a pinnacle idea of that, or penultimate idea of you are to be perfect, even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. We're supposed to be loving with that kind of generous love to everyone, self-sacrificial agape love for all life. Because all image bearers are worthy of that kind of love and dignity. It's a calling that is not necessarily easy, but it's what we're called to. And it is in the progress of being perfected. After all, stumbling forward is still forward movement. The end idea here, though, is to return humanity what it was dimensional, always meant to be. Perfect image bearers. If God reigns and sends his reign on everyone to water the crops so that everyone may eat, sending his sunshine so that everyone may see the warmth and feel it, then our love, our lives, must be reflective of that same kind of giving nature. That it is not because of what you do or do not do. It is because you are a person and worthy of love. This is why we come from an upside-down kingdom compared to the world's priorities. Because we are meant to be other-centered love. The very nature of God, from Genesis 1 and built upon to the imagery, for those who don't quite see it initially, in John. God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Even in Genesis 1, the Spirit of the air, the Lord, or the Spirit of the Lord hovering over the water, pardon me. God being there, and then the word spoken. It's a community of love from go. That is why we are a species that requires community. Why we need each other. Why we do better in groups. Why we do better when connecting with others. Because it's how we were designed. It's what we reflect as an image bearer. Because our creator, community of love in his very nature, as Yahweh. And going even past that, he has the heavenly counsel. Like it, it is this need for community, this need for love, this need to be other-oriented. And in a world where everyone wants to say, you're my enemy for this, you're my enemy for that, that's not how we're supposed to play. I'll give you a perfect example. When I was at a doctor's appointment, I was talking with a person about mandatory regulations and the fact that I medically can't wear a mask. I told them, you know, I'm happy to wait out my car, I'm happy to whatever, because I don't want to concern other people. I simply do not have the capacity. More than that, I am not going to. I am not going to make myself anyone's enemy. I'm simply going to live my life by my convictions, hoping others do the same. And if somebody chooses to make me their enemy because I don't want to do it their way, that is their choice. If they strike me, I turn the other cheek. If they lash out, I simply continue what I'm doing and love them. Because it's not about being a rug. It's about being resolute and full of mercy. As Paul said it himself, if you speak all the tongues of men, you do all of these things, but you don't love, you have nothing. You are nothing. Love is the core center idea of it. Because Jesus dying for all of us is that other centered love. That entire core idea. To give to others. Not because it is deserved, but because it is the very nature of who we are as His. And it's the very nature of grace. It is given not because it is deserved or earned, but simply because it is. And if we are shown grace and mercy that surpasses all understanding when it comes to our own failures, our own misdeeds, our own destruction and the wake of agony we have left with our own lives, then should we not offer that same mercy to others, other image bearers, siblings? Because at the end of the day, your enemy being flesh and blood is perpetuating the massive sibling rivalry. Either from Noah, from Adam and Eve, or a closed system evolution. Take your pick. It's still sibling rivalry. 
And if we are not called to wage war as Cain and Abel did, but to love, then we do it by going to a different standard, by living by the world's, uh, the, the Lord's way, not the world's way. The Lord's way of love, of mercy, of compassion, of kindness, of suffering, long-suffering. The fruits of the Spirit. Because God will see us through. He is promise keeper, he is way maker, he is miracle worker. And if we truly believe it, then showing others the mercy we've been shown gets a whole lot easier. I will see you guys tomorrow, Friday, for talking about teaching about giving to the needy as we start chapter 6. I'll see you guys then. May his favor be upon you. And remember, you're loved. We can love too. I'll see you then.